A couple of months ago, I put out a video debunking the idea that NVIDIA would launch an RTX 4090 that used 850 watts as standard. Now, that video was put together after talking to a bunch of sources all over the industry who all directly said there's no way the graphics card will use that much power. And, you know, since then, NVIDIA announced four nanometer hopper that even in its non-PCIe form used 700 watts, which means, look, consumer gaming cards do not use more power than these more specialized accelerator cards that don't even fit in a PCIe slot. Like that right there said, all right, no way, it's going to use less than 700 watts. Although, to be fair, I knew that the original target was above 400 watts all along from talking to OEMs. You know, they have to plan out logistics for power supplies in their cases long before a new generation comes out, and they were planning for well over 400 watts. And my overall target on my Lovelace League did directly say 450 to 600 watts for the reference RTX 4090. So, even if it wasn't going to be 850 watts, I have been stating for a very long time, actually, that Lovelace was known to be a power hog compared to previous generations, even if not some insane 800 to 1,000 watt monstrosity. Then, a month after that Lovelace leak, Igor extrapolated some information from an, the 3090 Ti's board that suggested NVIDIA was preparing to support up to 600 watts on air. Now, I do have to say, though, about that article, some websites need to really start actually reading Igor's articles in German. He was extrapolating, estimating, and speculating a bit in that article, not confirming he was 100% sure what the power of the actual card would be. And in fact, Igor even put out another article just a few days later clarifying that he had not confirmed the 4090 was going to literally use the 3090 Ti board. How many websites that reported that incorrectly even noticed? But anyways, my point is that, well, there has always been evidence that the 4090 would use 450 to 600 watts. Look, I, I just have to admit this. Despite hearing the top estimate was 600 watts and, and despite, you know, really respecting Igor a lot and knowing that he was saying NVIDIA is planning to support up to that much, I have to just admit that I have been thinking this whole time that there's, it's very unlikely, even if it's possible, that NVIDIA actually hits the top of that upper estimate. And, well, now I'm here to tell you they almost certainly will. Not 850 watts, but that's right. The current reference design, I can directly confirm to you today, seems to be 600 watts total board power, and that in fact the 4090 seems to likely be the first Lovelace card to launch, not a mid-range card as far as I can tell. The 4090 is much further along in being ready to launch, and no doubt this is because they want to take the crown while AMD launches Navi 33 first in the mid-range, which of course I leak first because that seems to be what AMD is doing first as well a few weeks ago. Well, upon getting this confirmation from my best sources, though, I actually reached out to others to confirm this insane thing as well, because you never want to rely on just one source, and it actually gets crazier than this. NVIDIA is going to do a lot of weird things to try to not lose this generation, and I want to talk about those things, and actually, I have a few updates for the RDNA 2 refresh cards coming out in under a month as well, but first, an ad from a sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform built to make you see math and science in a new way that's fun. Brilliant doesn't beam boring lecture videos into your head. They have fun, hands-on courses that have been tailored to keep you engaged so you can see subjects like mechanical engineering, that's what I majored in by the way, and other STEM courses in a new way that is fun and makes you learn. These courses have availability for all ability and knowledge levels, so you'll find something that interests you for sure, whether it's brushing up on everyday mathematics you're getting rusty in since you've been to college almost a decade ago, like me, or learning the fundamentals of computer science. Whether you're trying to keep sharp or learning new skills for your career, Brilliant is free to start and waiting for you. Join the over 11 million people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for Moore's Law Dead listeners. Head to Brilliant.org at the link in the description below and get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will get 20% off an annual premium membership and clicking on this link really does help the Moore's Law Dead channel. It costs you nothing. Get started for free at Brilliant today. So, after one of my best sources confirmed that the RTX 4090 was 
almost assuredly, or at least we can say right now, plan to consume 600 watts as standard in non-overclocked models. I reached out to as many of my other sources as I could to see if there's anything else I could learn. And one of my other best sources, well, he couldn't confirm the, anything about the gaming SKUs just yet. He could confirm that in an unprecedented move, NVIDIA may be increasing power for the professional lineup of cards. No, not to 450 watts. It is going to be a two-slot blower card again. But, well, you know, I owned a Vega 64, and that let you increase the power by 50%. And with a plus 50% power limit, it did typically run at about 340 to 350 watts, most of the time while gaming. And, well, I have to say that if I could kind of cool that with higher fan speeds, that A6000 I tested that's limited to 300 watts, that thing definitely had a better blower cooler with dual intake, actually leaked that cooler first. And so I did conclude that it was disappointing I couldn't increase the power limit with MSI Afterburner with my A6000 because it ran really cool with its innovative blower design. I was sure that that thing could support 350 watts. And yeah, well, my source tells me that it seems like NVIDIA is testing two types of top L6000 or L8000, I'm not 100% sure on the name yet, prototypes. One of them still uses the EPS 8-pin connector that can supply 300 watts, so that's going to be 300 watts plus 75 watts from the PCIe, 375 watts total possible. But they're testing models that do that, but that they also have models that use the new 16-pin that they're not sure if they want to bring to the professional community yet because that EPS 8-pin is standard. But anyways, the point is this. I don't think, and the people I've talked to behind the scenes agree with me, that you can really push even a high-quality blower cooler past 400 watts. And it, I would assume that NVIDIA is leaning towards still using the standard EPS 8-pin. But if they're even testing 16-pin models for this professional Lovelace card, then I have to assume that the prototypes they're working with are pushing the limits of the EPS 8-pin at the very least, which means that, yeah, they're probably looking to go from 300 watts total board power for the A6000 to probably right around 375 watts total board power. So, you know, it's not like a 50% increase in power, but this is unprecedented to take what is a standard tier of power consumption and move it up in the professional space. And, you know, it's at least, it's over 20%. You know, so I'd say, yeah, they're looking to use 20 to 30% more power for their professional card. And while this, again, isn't the gaming card, well, if it's about 30% more power, eh, what's 1.3 times 450 watts in the 3090 Ti? Well, you get pretty close to 600 watts. So I take this as more direct evidence that my other source, which again, I don't really think I needed other sources, but it's always good to have more than one. This supports that original source that NVIDIA is just going to push to the limits of professional, which is about 375 watts, and therefore push to the limits of gaming, which everyone I've talked to agrees is about 600 watts. And I am comparing the RTX 4090 as the successor to the 3090 Toy, because I believe if NVIDIA has any worries whatsoever that AMD could win this generation, and I think they do if they're willing to push a card to 600 watts, I don't think they're going to hold back at all. I mean, maybe they'll disable a couple SMs on the 4090, and maybe later there's room for some sort of 4090 refresh with GDDR7 next year. But at the end of the day, they're going to push this as hard as they can, and it really is more comparable to the 3090 Ti. Ti in this thing. Because they're really not going to hold back at all from what they can launch quarter three this year. And, well, look, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if the 4090 is unreasonable. It's for people who are usually unreasonable themselves. And I do want to be clear to anyone who's excited about a 600-watt 4090. I'm sure a lot of you are going to have uh, power breakers go out when you plug this thing in. I I've talked to a few people about this. Uh, 600 watts, power spikes. I assume you're not using a budget CPU, so it's at 250 watts for the CPU. You know, you're looking then at 850 watts before you take into account power spikes. I mean, your whole PC is probably using at least 1,000 watts at 100 watts for a high-end monitor. Maybe the lights are on in your room sometimes. You have other things plugged in. You know, maybe you have a, a window air conditioner. You probably do if you're trying to cool 600 watts. 
I think there's going to be a lot of people that find that though a U.S. household is supposed to be able to handle a certain amount of power, they don't always. Sometimes builders cut corners, and it's not always even cheap houses. Sometimes nice houses cut corners. I've been in houses that were cheaper that actually handled higher power better than much more expensive houses because it just turned out the builders cut corners. I'm just saying. There's going to be a lot of people that have the power, uh, that have uh, fuses blow that didn't think they would with the 4090. But I don't know. A, a bigger problem, though, besides the unreasonable 4090 for unreasonable people, is that the 4080 is then probably going to use 400 to 450 watts. I hope they stop at 350 watts for the 4080. And I think there's a chance they could. But I mean, look, if they think they need to push the 4090 to 600 watts to compete with the top 7950 or 7970 XT from AMD then I think that there's no doubt that they want the 4080 to beat the 7800 XT or at least not lose to it. And that means they're going to have to push that pretty hard as well. Same goes for the 4070. I hope they stop at 300 watts, but I don't think we can rule out 350 watts for that as well. And there's just, there's a lot of people that have been used to having like a 970 that uses 120 to 140 watts. I mean, I think the 670 uses about 170 watts, 180 watts around there. Going all the way to 350, there just will be some power supplies that can't use it. And there will for sure be a lot of 750-watt power supplies that can't run a 450-watt 4080. And uh, I don't know. I guess we're just going to have to see what happens with that. But honestly, one source pointed this out to me. We'll see who wins this generation. Clearly, NVIDIA is willing to push everything to the limit to at least come close to AMD with DLSS. I wonder what they're going to do with RDNA 4 because... <laughs> they're not going past 600 watts, guys. They're not. This is the limits of what a reference card can do. It has to fit in standard cases at a certain point. And I believe RDNA 4 will be almost as impressive as RDNA 3 as well and come just about a year-ish after RDNA 3. So, I don't know. That's another interesting thing to watch for. But for now, the system integrators and OEMs I've talked to, they don't seem phased by this. They are told ahead of time what they have to plan for. They tell me, hey, we were building our pre-built with a certain type of power supply because that's all that was required. You tell us we have to power a 600-watt card, we'll just buy more expensive power supplies and make our cases better. None of them actually seem that worried, which is interesting, but I wonder if that note will change if they have to support <laughs> something even crazier than that after Lovelace. Um, oh, and I guess one other thing I will add to this is I am hearing about multiple AIB models that go above 700 watts as well. So again, that whole power breaker thing in the U.S. household, I really think it's going to be an, a big issue for a lot of people. But now I actually want to end this video by moving on to some AMD updates about the RDNA 2 refresh cards that I really detailed heavily in my Road to RDNA 3 and Lovelace uh, video. So on April 16th, you know, long after that video came out, I clarified some previous statements about what's going on with this 6X50 XT pricing and reference designs. Well, first of all, I can now double confirm that AIB models will be the overwhelming majority of the volume, like always. And point number two, I can confirm that there will, though, be reference 6750 XTs and reference 6950 XTs sold from AMD.com. But now it's not a probably... The 6650 XT will not have a reference design despite what other people have been saying. And so, I, I don't know, I think what I said in a recent video was a little murky, like probably not, not a lot of volume. And I just want to be very clear, most of the volume is going to AIBs. There will be a reference 6950 XT, there will be a reference 6750 XT, and there will not be a reference 6650 XT. But overall, the volume for these models will be very high, and I don't expect the AIB models to sustainably have higher prices than MSRP for very long like we've seen with previous launches. Oh, and the 6800? Don't expect it to be literally canceled. Remember, I said basically phased out. Let me put it this way. There was a bit of a supply for the 6800 in its first three to six months relative to its big brothers, but I think we can all agree that after the first half year, very few RX 6800s were made. They've been supplied in very low numbers, almost certainly because AMD really doesn't have almost any yields that need to be clocked that low and disabled that much for Navi 21, but 
don't expect a surge of 6,800s. Yes, they're still going to be made to a certain extent, but they're not going to like all of a sudden be plentiful again compared to their other counterparts. And that's really what the 6,750 XT is for. Something closer to a 6,800 in performance in the 6,700 XT that costs less to make, that's easier to keep around $500. And I, I, I've seen some other reports going around that people think they're going to cancel these other models, at least as of now. I am told that, well, again, I can report what I said before, that they're kind of phasing out other models. I don't think they're going to 100% cancel any of them. There will always be some yields of like Navi 23 that can't quite clock to a 6650 XT and also don't need to be disabled to a 6600. I think all of the models they have now are going to stay around. There's just going to be less numbers of some of them as they make this new higher bend model. Uh, for Navi 23 and Navi 22 and Navi 21. Oh, and I've seen all types of people saying that the refresh models may be the MSRP of the previous cards or that they're going to be, you know, it, I wouldn't double down on any whispers any leaker is hearing about pricing right now. AMD has not decided on the pricing yet. At least what I hear is it's unlikely they'll give it the exact same MSRP for all of them compared to the previous models. And And, and, and here's why AMD hasn't made a decision on pricing yet. You see this picture here? This is just a few glimpses thrown together from stock rooms. One stock room for this picture. And I, I jumbled it up a bit because I just don't want there to be any chance my source gets in trouble. But I have pictures like this from multiple Best Buys, Micro Centers, and mom and pop hardware stores. They did not have back rooms that look like this a month ago. Despite MSRPs being inflated right now... They're not going to stay inflated. Like I said, I, I really wasn't kidding from that previous quote. There are dozens of cards in stock that they're trying to get rid of and scared to put the price at MSRP because that's actually below what these locations paid to get the card. They don't want to sell at a loss, but they're getting close to. And that means... Yeah, AMD is watching this closely before the launch of their cards, before they decide on final pricing, and just expect prices to keep going down. In fact, one thing uh, I've heard from a couple of sources and one explicitly pointed out to me is that the East Coast seems to have gotten lower prices first, as that's where a lot of shipments are arriving first, and that you should expect rolling prices going down across micro centers from the East to the West Coast over this month. And so it, the low prices hit the East Coast of the U.S. first. If you're in California... You're going to see the same crazy prices people have been reporting in New Jersey very soon. It just hasn't hit there yet. Oh, and I guess one last thing here as I just get these little AMD tidbits out of the way. Arc 6400 came out today, and I think it's proof that a full dive version of this could have afforded to be about $170 to $180. Like I outlined in previous videos that if AMD used cheaper coolers, they could have shaved another $20 off the board and, you know... I, in my last video, I talked about how my 6500 XT that I tested, even overclocked, seemed to use below 90 watts most of the time. I am sure if AMD clocked that thing just 5% lower, they could have fit it without a PCIe connector, which would have reduced the board cost. They could have put cheaper 750 Ti-like coolers, and they really could have made a 6500 non-XT that was 90 to 95% the performance of the 6500 XT and probably cost $30 less to make. And so, I don't know, just imagine if AMD had a card that was most of the way towards this one here and not this here and launched for $170 without requiring a power connector. I just think it would have been better received. And I don't know why AMD thought they had to push something that was clearly going to be a 6400 or 6500 non-XT to try to be a full 6500 XT. But hopefully AMD learns from this mistake. And uh, yeah, I don't know what else there is to say about Navi24. Kind of tired of talking about it. And... Well, I'm not tired of talking about everything, but I am done talking in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please check that you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Ring the bell button so you don't miss those upcoming leaks. Uh, about, I mean, honestly, Navi 31 and 32 very soon. I already did the Navi 33 leak because it's coming out first. And besides that, they've got a lot of exciting guests coming up. You're not going to want to miss it. Subscribe to Broken Silicon. If you have the extra money... 
consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a lot of exclusive ad-free content. Like every Broken Cell kind of comes out early to patrons every week. We have a die shrink coming out near the end of this week looking at the Xbox One launch. We had a, so a fun guest on just for patrons a couple weeks ago. There's lots of premium and exclusive content coming to patrons. We can't do this without them, so look for supporting us there. And otherwise, well, we've made it this far. Thank you at the end of the day for watching. <laughs>